Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be highlighting the functions lengther, x, and y, and kind of giving a practical example of how to use them by setting up correct bullet spawning with objects and like weapons where it's not always simple where you can just put the origin or just have it be like x plus five or something like that so here i have a gun and the actual origin of the gun is right there in the middle which i can't do because we're changing the image angle but it's right kind of in the middle but below where the actual bullet is going to spawn and it's to the right as well and if it was just facing one direction like if you were just looking to the right like this and we shot you could set that up by just creating the bullet at uh, plus X and a little bit of minus Y, and that would be fine. But those numbers will not work once you start moving it around. So here, we're going to be able to move our gun around any angle we want, and it will spawn our bullet correctly. And we're going to be using several different functions here, and we're going to make it so that whatever projectile you want to spawn if you have something that is going to rotate or move around or change directions then this is a really good system for you to use the assets are going to be available to download and link in the description and you can also get them online uh, these ones are from open game art uh, go to search for craft picks or do sci-fi icons and this will come up they are free to use, but make sure you use the license if you actually want to put them in a commercial game or something like that, because you might need to go and buy them depending on the license that is being used. All right. So with all that, uh, let's just jump into this. The first thing we need are those sprites, and I've got them already open in a folder, so I am just going to drag and drop them into here, because these are the only two that we're going to need, uh, is the ray gun and the bullet. So I'm going to rename these really quickly and these are actually really large sprites like this gun is 211 by 139 so these are pretty high quality sprites which is really cool we're gonna make objects for both of these so we can do that and the object for the bullet we're gonna go ahead and set up because it just has one line of code and it's really simple so we're gonna add a crate event and I'm just gonna set speed equal to 15 because we're going to set its direction when we create it, and then it's just going to go off and fly. Really simple. The bulk of the code is going to be inside of OBJ Ray Gun here, because this is where we have to set up the uh, spawning of the bullet based on the direction that it's actually looking at. So the first thing we'll do is set the sprite, and then we're going to come back into the sprite really quick and take a look at this. So we have our middle center origin right here, which is the default origin that you normally want to have. That's a good one to have because if you spawn something like at an X and Y coordinate, then it will spawn directly at that X and Y coordinate, which is usually what you want. Sometimes with tiles, uh, you want it to actually be like in the top left or bottom right, depending on like how you're laying them out because it's easier to do like 0, 32, 64 laying down tiles. But for most objects, including projectiles and weapons, you actually want the origin to be in the middle. So this becomes a problem when you want to spawn a bullet, because if you spawn a bullet at the X and Y of the gun, which is probably where you're going to spawn it, then it will spawn it directly here in the middle. And a really easy fix for that is to put the origin of the gun right here. That is exactly where you want it to spawn. Or you can actually move it off the sprite. It can actually be way over here if you want it to. That's fine too. And that would mean that the bullet is going to spawn right there, which would work. But it would be really, really weird once we started moving this sprite around. And if we wanted the image angle to change, that means because the sprite is the origin over here, it would actually rotate around that origin, which would look really, really funny and probably not what you want. So we want it to be in the middle so that it rotates well, like if you have a turret or something like that. And then we want to spawn the bullets over here as well. So we need to just do a little bit of math and it's pretty easy if you open up the sprite editor because you can actually see uh, coordinates down here. Okay, so the origin is right around here in the middle. So we, we'll say the origin is 90, 70. Now we want to get the X and Y coordinate over here instead. So I'm going to put my mouse over here. And now you can see in the bottom left, over there, it was 90, 70. And now it's 
2, 10, and 50. So the x coordinate was 90, now it's 2, 10, so we need to add about uh, 120. And what was the other one? It was 90 and 70, I think we said. So now it is 50, so we need to actually take away 20. So we're going to add 120 to x and take away 20 from y. So let's just remember that. And inside of Raygun, we're actually just going to add those as variables. So inside here, we're going to set gun offset, oof, come on, offset x equals 125, gun offset y is equal to negative 20 because we are subtracting that from it. Now, if you're getting triangles, that means you've updated to the most recent runtime, and that's great because this means that you've only set this variable one time, but we're gonna use it, so don't worry about it. You're not getting an error, that's actually a good thing. Now we want to set up the direction that the gun is facing, and to do that, we're gonna make a variable for that and use the point direction function. So we're gonna say gun direction is equal to point direction. Now here we need to put in 0, 0. And I have played around with this and I've tried to figure out exactly why we need 0, 0. But I can just tell you that we do. If you put X or Y in here, it's going to be totally off. So just do 0, 0. And if you understand why we need to do that, let me know. Otherwise, it'll be a mystery forever. Okay. So 0, 0 for the first X and Y. Then we're going to put in gun offset X and gun offset y. So this is going to be the direction that our gun is actually facing here. Then we're going to go and make a variable called gun length and here we're going to use the function point distance again 0 0 and gun offset x gun offset y. Alright so that is good to go there. Now, we're, we've only using the, we've created these here, which is why this is here. We haven't used these anywhere else, but we will. So let's go in and make the a global left pressed event. So mouse down to global, left pressed. And this is actually going to spawn the bullet. And it has to be global, otherwise you actually have to click on the gun, which isn't what we want at all. So the first thing to do is set the looking at variable. So we're going to make a looking at variable and set it equal to point direction x, y, mouse x, mouse y. So if you had like a sentry gun or a turret that was rotating around, you can change the image angle based on the point direction of its x and y and something else. So something like a timer or that just goes up and up and then resets at zero or something like that. Here we're just going to have it be following the mouse, which is why it's going to be at mouse x, mouse y. So now we're going to use um, those that gun length and gun direction that we created inside of here. And we're going to get x and y coordinates to spawn the bullet at. And I'm actually going to save those as inside of variables because it'll be a lot easier to then create the bullet. So I'm going to make a variable called bullet spawn x. And this is going to be equal to the, our x coordinate of the gun, so that no matter where it's at in the level, it works, plus length dir x. And length dir allows you to basically get a coordinate, an x coordinate, from one point to another. And that's where this works, is these functions length dir x and y are kind of abstract if you don't know how to put them into practical use, which is what we're going to do here. So the length that we want. We have that in a variable. That's gun length. The direction is going to be looking at, because that's what we're currently facing, plus our gun direction. And if we do that, that will give us the correct x coordinate to spawn our bullet at. We'll do the same thing for y. So bullet spawn y, y plus length dir, and this time length dir y. There are two different functions there. But we're going to pass in gun length and then looking at plus gun direction. So we pass in the same things here. Just make sure you do X and Y for length there so that you have specific X and Y coordinates. 
And then we're actually going to make the bullet. So bullet equals instance create layer. And here you just pass in bullet spawn x, bullet spawn y, create it in the instances layer, or wherever you want to put it, and create obj bullet. Now you can see here that if we didn't have variables here, we'd actually have to copy this like whole thing and put it inside of that x coordinate, which just makes it a lot harder to read. So that's much easier and you can change it easier as well. And you can spawn other things if you wanted to do that. Now we'll set the direction of the bullet so that if it flies correctly, it's gonna be equal to looking at, and we already set the speed inside of the bullet, so we're all good there. Now the last thing that we need to do, well, let's go ahead and run this and make sure that, okay. This is something I always forget is to put objects in my room. So let's open up our room, place the, the gun inside of there. Now we should be able to shoot, but we can't rotate it around yet, which is fine. So it looks like it's being made correctly, so that looks really good. And you can see that the bullet is actually changing because we're changed the looking at, but we haven't changed the gun moving around yet. So let's go ahead and do that by adding a step event. And inside of the step event, all we actually are doing is just setting our image angle to point direction x, y, mouse x, and mouse y. That way the gun is going to rotate around because we're already changing where the, where the bullet's spawning. And now our gun rotates around. And if we fire, it's going to shoot correctly no matter which way the gun is facing. So if we play around with some of these options, like gun offset X and Y, if I set this just to zero, then the X coordinate is going to not be affected in the least bit, which means that it's going to spawn from the middle there. And it's kind of hard to tell because the depth of it is below the gun. But if we decrease the depth of our bullet when we spawn it, it'll be on top there. And you can see that it's spawning from the middle because that's the origin of the gun, which isn't what we want. But we know that it's 125. Now, if we were to change the origin of our gun here, so if we put our origin right there, just to show you this, and we actually just changed like this whole thing. We could say X and Y right here. And it would actually spawn these fairly correctly. But you can see that the gun then rotates at the tip, which really isn't what you would want. I think it looks really funny, and that's not something that you'd want there. So this system allows you to bypass that and have origins that make sense and are easy to work with and still have projectiles being created at the right place no matter which way you're facing or looking or rotating or whatever. So this is really handy in top-down shooters, side scrollers, just anything that you have a projectile that you need to make from an object but the object's origin isn't the place where you want to make it, this is what you want to do. So this project will be available to download in the description below. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or anything that you'd like to see me cover, definitely let me know. Hit me up on Twitter, leave a description or a comment down below, and I will get back to you. Thanks for joining me, and as always, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you later. Hey there, it's Aaron. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, I encourage you to check out my Patreon. You can join for as little as a dollar a month and get access to our Discord channel and be able to vote on the next series that I tackle. You'll also be able to do one-on-one -on -one training sessions for $10 a month or more if you want more time with me. We can work on whatever it is you're struggling with and I can help you make that awesome game or project. You'll also get access to my courses. Every time I publish a new course on Udemy or Skillshare, every one of my patrons gets that course for free. So even if you support me for just $1 a month, that's a great steal because I'm going to be putting out a lot more courses this year. I want to do YouTube, Udemy, teaching, game development full-time, and you can help make that happen. So thank you very much. I hope you'll check out my Patreon and consider supporting me on there. And check out my courses on Udemy and Skillshare if you're wanting more content from me. Have fun making great games, and I'll talk to you later.